Good day everyone. I'm your reporter for today. I'm Patricia Clercilio and I'm going to tackle the Brindy speech of Dr. Jose Rizal and the La Solidaridad. So let's start. Brindy speech or toast speech of Dr. Jose Rizal. June 25, 1884. Banquet in the restaurant Ingles in Madrid. Around 60 people attended this gathering, most of which are compatriots of the painters. The occasion was held at the restaurant Ingles in Madrid and started at 9 p.m. until the time Rizal described himself as hungry and without money. To honor Juan Luna and Felix Hidalgo. The victory of Juan Luna and Felix Hidalgo in the National Exposition of Fine Arts in Madrid in June 25, 1884. Jose Rizal delivered a toast together with his speech, the Brindis, in Spanish and it means to celebrate or to toast in English. Luna won first prize for his El Expolarium while Hidalgo won the second prize for his painting Virgins Cristianas Expuestas al Populaco Rizal toasting to the two painters to have a good health and citing their win as evidence that Filipinos and Spaniards were equals. Rizal started his speech by using flowery terms such as being surrounded by men of heart. He also described the atmosphere during the time as a place where a noble, by, uh, where a noble emotions dwell and where the air is full of empathetic good feeling. During that period, since the Philippines was oppressed by the Spaniards, talking about those kind of things would resolve to being termed as a filibusters. Rizal's speech commanded the attention of uh, a lot of those people who went to the dinner. Juan Luna de San Pedro y Novicio Ancheta, born on October 24, 1857, December 7, 1899, better known as Juan Luna. Juan Luna was a Filipino painter, sculptor, and political activist of the Philippine Revolution during the late 19th century. He is known for his work, Polarium. He spent eight months completing the painting which depicts the dying gladiators. He submitted it to the Exposition Nacional de Velas Artes in 1884 in Madrid. The picture recreates a spoiling scene in a Roman circus where a dead gladi- gladiators are a strip of weapons and garments. Together with other works of Spanish Acad- Academy, the Spolarium was on exhibit in Rome in April 1884. He's winning the gold medal in 1884 Madrid Exposition of Fine Arts, a uh, win fellow of Filipino painter Felix Hidalgo, prompted celebration which was a major highlight in the memoir of uh, members of propaganda movement with the fellow illustrados toasting to the two painters good health and to the brotherhood between Spain and Philippines. El Expolarium or Spolarium painted by Juan Luna won gold medal in the 1884 Madrid Exposition of Fine Arts. Jose Rizal noted while he was giving his speech that Spolarium represented the significance and essence of the Filipinos social, moral, and political that includes humanity in severe ordeal. Humanity and and redeem reason, the idealism in an open struggle with prejudice, uh, fanaticism, and justice. He actually indicated the purpose of one luna for painting spolarium with uh, which is the painted to awaken Filipinos from ignorance, blindness, mental darkness, and oppression. They both knew that Filipinos are loved behind uh, compared to other countries due to being colonized. I assume that while Rizal was trying to enlighten Filipinos through his speech and writing, Juan Luna was trying to awaken Uh, the Filipinos from the oppression through his painting which is Polarium. Uh, then as he talks regarding the Polarium, he claims that the canvas is not mute, the shadow in the darkness. 
The shadow portrays the slavery, oppression, horror, and misery going on as an orphan uh, face their fate. Likewise, during those times, the friars who enslaved the Filipinos uh, persecute those who take legal action. Felix Resurrection Hidalgo E. Padilla, born on February 21, 1855 to March 13, 1913, was a Filipino artist. He is acknowledged as one of the great Filipino painters of the late 19th century and is significant in Philippine history for having been a acquaintance and inspiration for members of the Philippine Reform Movement. Hidalgo's winning the silver medal for the painting was a, a landmark achievement that proved the ability of Filipinos to match the work of Spaniards and laid to claim that Filipinos' participation in, uh, in European culture. Virgins Christianas Expuestas al Popolaco, painted by Felix Hidalgo, won silver medal in 1884 Madrid Exposition of Fine Arts. One of the women is posed seated naked at the foreground of the painting with her head bow in misery. The semi-nude women have been stripped not only of their garments but also their dignity. Created in the academic style of Europe, the unfortunate women in the artwork are considered by some indigenous Filipinos as virgins, being led out, stolen from, and ridiculed. The women are, uh, the women are young virgins cornered by a mob of sexually hungry Roman men. One of the men has his hand over one semi-naked female whose eyes are looking up to the heaven, asking and begging for help that never comes. In his speech, uh, Rizal stresses the reason of their gathering, which is to indicate an achievement of uh, which enlighten what really is a dark society, such as that painting of Luna shows. He likewise commends Hidalgo for shedding light to the various parts of the world and that he truly respects them. Rizal stated that the change shall take place through a figure of speech such as illustrious achievements of Philippine children are no longer consummated within the home. Thus, to the community of Filipinos in Madrid, this serves as a clear nod Meanwhile, he also praises the Filipino youth who brought the laurels to the Philippines. This kind of situation, which is demonstrated in the painting, is still happening in our world today. As we see or hear the news of corruption, exploitation, war, and etc., we can confirm that there is still high possibility of that more powerful countries might attempt to colonize or overrule other less powerful countries. This is also because humans' greed or wishes still exist that we cannot deny that there is not. Consequently, I ask everyone not to think about their own benefit but see the society as a whole and the power of their country or society as their own proud power or pride. In order to help achieve its goals, the propaganda movement put up its own newspaper called La Solidaridad. La Solidaridad, or the, Soli or the Solidarity, was an organization created in Spain on December 13, 1888, composed of Filipino liberals exiled in 1872 and students attending Europe's universities, the organization helped to increase Spanish awareness of the needs of its colony, the Philippines, and to propagate a closer relationship between the Philippines and Spain. Uh, the SOLI, as the reformists fondly called their official organization, came out once every two weeks. The first issue saw print was published on November 15, 1895. The La Solidaridad uh, first editor was Graciano Lopez Jaina. In its first editorial, 
Graciano Lopez Haina outlines the publication's aspiration to compile uh, progressive and liberal ideas and to promote the ideal of democracy while exposing the ills plaguing Spain and its all provinces. He, uh, he emphasized that the La Solidaridad will especially focus on affairs relevant to the Philippines which lacks representation in the Spanish Cortes. Uh, Marcelo H. Del Pilar took over in October 1899 under his editorship. The aims of the newspaper expanded. His articles caught the attention of Spanish leaders and ministers. The newspaper published not only articles and essays about economic, cultural, political, and social conditions of the country, but also in the current news. Both local and foreign, and speeches of prominent Spanish leaders about the Philippines. Dr. Jose Rizal became the leader of the propaganda movement, contributing numerous articles to his newspaper, The La Solidaridad, published in Barcelona. Rizal's political program included integration of the Philippines as a province of Spain, representation in the Cortes as Philippi- uh, the Spanish. Spanish Parliament, the replacement of Spanish friars by Filipino priests, freedom of assembly and expression, and quality of the Filipino and Spaniards before the law. After years of publication from 1889 to 1895, funding of the La Solidaridad becomes scarce. Committed the propaganda's contribution to the newspaper is stopped and Del Pilar funded the newspaper almost on his own. Penniless in Spain, Del Pilar stopped the publication of La Solidaridad on November 15, 1895 with 7 volumes and 160 issues. In Del Pilar's farewell editorial, he said, We are persuaded that no sacrifices are too little to win, the rights and the liberty of the nation that is oppressed by slavery.